Hey guys, Tyler up here, bringing you a 2v2 today. We are on Belgorod. If they're spawning on the left, we've got Dark Region with Soviets, who has NKVD defensive and counter-attack. Teaming up with him is Kirov. Also, Soviets gone for NKVD, got that early radio intercept going. Gone for early tier 2 as well. On the right-hand side, we've got Chukcha in Mexico. We've also there, Assault Support. Festung Armour and Ostrupen and finally Unbalanced BS off of Ground Forces as OKW locked in immediately. In terms of rankings, uh, allies are an arranged team around rank 40. Axis randoms, I think, unbalanced uh, around 30, is it? Uh, not the tab out here. Yeah, 35. His teammate took uh, 65. Okay, really pushed down onto the cutoff. Conscripts back out to a safe range. Doesn't look like they're really in cover there, though. The wrong side of the shrubs, most of the models. Disconnect the allied fuel for a little bit here. Pushed up right the way with their machine gun. Didn't suppress anything though, Maxim. Under pressure. Gonna try to set up. Oh, I think he could have just sit down and uh, shot there, but gonna continue backing away. We do have another Maxim coming out. Two Maxims early on for Kirov. Setting up now, but the machine gun's gonna set up on top of them as well. He does have a little bit of light cover. Conscripts get behind the ball. They're chipping away at the flanking units. The Maxim's under a lot of pressure here, though. Trying to retreat now. Could death loop here a bit. Wouldn't be able to steal it, though, I don't think, anyway. Wouldn't be able to get away with it. And then the second Maxim comes in with the pin. Overall, fine engagement for Kirov, but... Did concede a bit of territory in the process. Four conscripts for Dark Region. Pretty classic stuff from him there. Pretty much always going for the four con start. Really Molotov tech as well for Dark Region. Did those guys... Oh no, I was going to say, it looked like they were crouching down for a rifle nade, but no, it doesn't have battle phase done yet. That was a bad move from Unbalanced. I think maybe he right clicked that conscript, didn't hit stop afterwards. So he accidentally chases them around the corner. Oh, the squad behind cover suppressed. Reinforcements are rolling in, machine gun. And throw a bit of work there. Seems to be missing though. Yeah, with its suppression uh, active, very slow reload on that. Oh! Kubel! Empty tank grenade from downtown. Down it goes. Another cutoff move from Unbalanced. Have to know quite a lot of fuel. Conscripts Uraring. Thought they're going to try to go for the wipe on that, but. Close in. And now the allies are riding high. They've forced a bunch of retreats. I'm going to be uh, relying on the 222 timing, I think, to push this one back and start forcing away these Maxims. MG34 farm bounce. I didn't actually notice, but he went for two Sturm Pioneers. An unusual choice. Right from out from these Grenadiers, but the Maxims so spread out there, he does any damage. But decides to cut and run here, Kirov. I think he could have stood and fought, but he's playing it safe. This is actually a pretty fast 2 2 2 from Chukcha. Got a mine coming up. It was started to plant in view, though. 
I might have spotted that. No tech from either of the Soviet players. Kiros gone for an early zis. Yeah, 222 two, two comes out, does a little sprinkling of damage. Kiros playing it very, very safe until that zis is out there. Does not have grenades himself ticked yet, though. Ooh. Spot down there for Dark Region. Double Sturmpire is doing some big damage. Gonna try to stick around with this squad as well to do some capping out the back. But that's a good Molotov. Forces a retreat. Both sides. Either way, look at this map control right now for the Axis. Looking really strong. Definitely that uh, 2 2 2 timing. Forcing Kirov back a lot. But, you know, this is ordinarily where the Soviet team would maybe be fielding some of their own light vehicles, but they are way behind on tech. The Dark Region does often tech skip right up to tier 4. Pre pretty calm for Kirov as well. So if they decide to try to do that here, both of them, with absolutely no light vehicles. Pretty hard to handle. Looks like I'm balanced though. Not gonna go for a flak. Now yeah, the next tech truck. Meanwhile, we got a Dishka from Dark Region. Inferior cover, but the disc is pretty good in the head to head. Nice to retreat here. Good choice. This is Barrage backing out the machine gun. We are a uh, midish game sniper here coming in for Trukcha. It's an interesting call up against the team weapon style. We'll push onto the cutoff there from Kirov. Tried to find a mine interrupted though. Sniper chopping through here. Might actually be a pretty good call from Chuksha, that sniper. Given, you know, there's no light vehicle pressure coming back the other way. Kirov goes for another conscript, meanwhile. Sturmpires could slightly reposition into the light cover there. It'd be nice, especially against the squad out the back. Real back and forth action though, real tug of war. Have a look at the KD here, Dark Region, yeah, not too bad actually. Both the Soviet players doing pretty well considering, you know, they're playing with a lot of conscripts. Okay, so Dark Region going for a pretty late quad. I mean, maybe their fuel control just hasn't been that sharp. Tries to go for a bit of a flank, but there are some S mines down there. Quite a large patch of them too, actually, for Chukcha. That allows his machine gun to reign supreme down here in the south. Got the 2 2 hasn't been doing much with it. After uh, it took that initial bout of damage, and maybe there's a bad time to pack up the machine gun. Probably could have done very well from that cover position. Here's the quad. Was it initially going for a Faust, but got suppressed too fast? Our script's Uraring in, but run right into this MG34. 222's gonna come around the corner. Kirov does have anti tank grenades now. He's gonna deploy one here. Oh, and there's a Zist there as well. 222 trying to back round the corner. And not successful. Here's the sniper in some trouble as well. Quad making some moves. Oh boy, OKW flak base trying to go up here. The quad can actually kill this quite easily. 
he's respecting the uh, the pressure from unbalance. He's coming down here with the Rakitin. Quad just shreds uh, in construction shred, right? it up. Thought he might have gone for an attack ground miracle shot, but no. Okay, they're going to try to put a bit of a siege down on this. Kirov setting up with the Zis. Pretty good to back this up with some machine gun play, but that's actually a nice smoke. Diffusing the pressure. Okay, popping out now for Chuck shit. careful when driving in close with your 222 like that. You don't know exactly where your enemy's anti-tank guns are. I'm going to need to come off like that. It's often death. Some Falschen Jäger from Unbalance. Enemy forces are securing our territory. Oh boy. Sniper getting a little bit low there. Has to retreat in the end. I'm pretty good for the allies right now. This quad has definitely uh, had a big impact. Bad timing for the Axis to lose control of their fuel. Alright, so they try to make their push towards medium tanks. Second balance. Gonna go for a second Rakesson. I think that's a perfectly respectable idea. I might one shot the quad that way. Try to deal with it. I think, you know, with this kind of infantry core, it can still do perfectly fine against what Dark Region's fielding as well, so. Don't have to worry about that too much. He's up against double green sections or anything like that. Okay, easy dodge on these grenades. Might need to cool cool off on those. So far, most of those rifle grenades seem to have been wasted. He's picking up a second sniper. This one's up to 15 kills. Definitely doing quite well. Pretty good Zis barrage there. Sniper runs through it though. Looking for more damage. Do we have tier 4 up for Kirov. Shimega struggling there with the Molotov down. Oh boy, Chukcha loses the machine gun. Gonna be able to recover that. Second sniper on the field did shoot one shot as well. And that's exactly what happens when you go for the double raketons. So much easier to knock out the quad. You can see he was trying to drive away, but it's hard to react. Oh no, and then Kirov loses his engineers. The double snipers teaming up there for some massive damage. Going another squad of Falsham Jaeger now, unbalanced. Interesting that he did decide to go for another Falsham Jaeger instead of Ovis. Dark Region's rebuilding the quad. Interesting choice. I mean, might be up against some planes later on, but these planes are generally not as much of a threat as like the Overwatch ones. Much easier to dodge. Alright, here comes the T-34 for Kirov. Where are these conscripts going? 
Dude behind the machine gun, but they are just getting lit up by the snipers on their way through. Uses the Vir-1 there. Might be able to get the kill. Ooh, not quite. I think they need to run down to line up the shot there. And now here comes a T-34. Snipers in some big trouble all of a sudden. T-34 though, gonna focus on the pack. For the D-crew here. Oh, there's the Raketan. Uh-oh, T-34 is in some major trouble now. Gets the D-crew. Oh, no attack rounds from the Raketans. Here they go now, late, late, late. Gets away. Tense stuff there from both teams, but, uh, you know, Sniper survives, so is the T-34. And uh, should be able to recruit that. Not too much trouble. I imagine the KD has started to shift quite dramatically, though, with those snipers on the field. Oh, well, not actually too bad. Promising signs for the allies at this stage. Goes the second quad for Kirov. I mean, uh, from Dark Region. He has put up his next stage of tech, and he's got a T34 out as well. We are losing territory. I don't know why you decided to rebuild the quad. I'm a little bit puzzled by that. Dumb snipers are ripping in here. Dark region has a tremendous amount of manpower floating, by the way, right now. I'm shocked that he does not have a Zis to back up this T-34. Axis could easily have a medium on the field. You can see both of them have the required amount of fuel. And, you know, if... Yeah, there he goes now, building it. Yes. Good three minutes late building this Zis. Don't know what he's doing. Easily have got pushed by it. Panzer four and lost the trade. Oh, that's a bad miss. That was no engine damage on the T-34. And here comes a second T-34. Chukcha in some major trouble. But might get a, yeah, conscript wipe. Conscript server stay there, welcome. T-34 is swooping in on the team weapons now, though. Gets the D-crew on the pack. Gonna try steal it. You're already one AT gun. You could do with another one though. Go for a bit of a base inspection. The raketons are coming down. They're not here yet though. Oh, this one uh, getting a little bit too close. Don't take a foul. So that could go down, but. They're getting tugged around. He's trying to use them to uh, fight that off. Does end up going down though. Panzer IV arrives. Oh, that was just the flak base that killed it actually. Okay. This is a J from Chukcha. Coming in from the bottom side. Snapper's getting a couple shots in here. Before coming in from the south. I think they heard this in the fog. around the side of it. A bit of a block. Oh, that's a really good block from Chukcha. Cleans him up there. That was some great tank handling. There's a line of LMG Greenies coming in behind this though to pressure away the AT gun as well. So this is a great, great move. And now Kirov all of a sudden really down the dumps has almost no army to speak of. Between the conscript loss and two T-34s going down. Half the army of everybody else in the game basically now. Some Falschimega waiting up there in the north though, it's interesting. Rebuild on the conscripts for Kirov. Both of the allies have the anti-tank overwatch. 
Don't have the munitions for it quite yet, but something to watch out for. Okay, here he comes in from the rear, but he's on hold fire for a bit. Oh, that's a clean bundle grenade, though. Dishka goes down. Doesn't have anything super cheap to steal that with, so he's going to pick it up with the false reagent. It's expensive. Oh, conscripts down. Another squad loss for Kirov. He is falling apart here. Another T-34 in the build for Dark Region. He's still got quite a lot of manpower floating. Probably do with the second combat engineer at this stage, since he's got so many vehicles now. He really wants this quad as well. He's rebuilt it again. The enemy is taking what we have secured. There's this barrage out the back. I'm going to catch the snipers, I think. That is no good. And these snipers are just ripping them to shreds. 31 and 16 kills now. Now we have a look at the KDS. It's gone downhill fast for Kirov. He was almost even a oh, what like five minutes ago. He's 30 down. Second Zis for Dark Region, okay. Great hit from the T-34, but he's slow on the chase. Gets the kill anyway with the conscript, though. That was a lucky shot. Yagpans are now for unbalanced. Interesting. I think it's probably like a pretty good choice, especially if you can get some mines down to defend it. So he's kind of lacking snares at the moment. He's going for a double Yagpanzer, in fact. range there. We are in for an AT grenade. Only one comes through though. Thanks, uh, quite far behind on victory points but they're evening things out right now. The enemy is taking our territory. Second Panzer 4J for Chukcha, that's interesting. Making a move, going in, and kills off the T-34. This is some, uh, not so good stuff for Kirov. His preservation really, the last five or so minutes, falling off a cliff. Misclick, okay. Before Jay's on the field rebuilding the lost pack. That one did get destroyed. I was wondering if Kirov would not steal it. I think there was an opportunity to, but didn't take it, just killed it off instead. Some Soviet tank traps up here. Provided some cover. We are losing supplies to the enemy. To the VP, Urang around the corner. Quite slow to fire with the MG42 because of the suppression. Gets a good Molotov off there. Does cost himself quite a few conscript models though with the snipers watching the area. Smoke into the center, maybe just doing that for a bit of recon action. Double Zissa rolling up here on to the Agpanzers. The double P4s are making a move. Charging on top of the double Zis. His teammates' units are coming across to assist, but neither of the Soviet players has enough munitions for anti tank overwatch right now to really shut down this kind of move. Oof. Oh boy, Chuck is in some major trouble. He drops down the planes. Some creative driving here. One P4 goes down. What about the second one? T34 does fall. Looks like the second P4 is going to escape. A conscript goes down for Dark Region in the middle as well. Oh, 
Oh, is it map-wide reinforcement with that ability? I, th I thought it was only in the circle. That's interesting. I use this so infrequently. So it's reinforcing those Falsham Jaeger. Steals a Zist down here, by the way. Trying to do some cheeky uh, attacks. Reckless stuff could have been a lot worse if the Allies had the anti-tank overwatch as well. That was fortuitous. So There's a good rotation of the Zis from Dark Region. Certainly. Double Jagdpanzer is coming down. Some big Falshi Mega pressure. Decrease the Zis. And kill the combat engineers as well. I don't, were those actually combat engineers or were those uh, decrews? Some of the models, not sure. I think they were actually combat engineers. Kirov doesn't have any. Okay. Still Kirov with a low population. Dark region still competitive in terms of army size. And they've got the anti-tank overwatch locked and loaded now. This could be a turning point for the allies. We do really need to kill these snipers. We've got 23 and 37. Oh, what a shot. Oh, but that's just so many conscript models. They pop one off in one volley anyway. Uh, it was the higher vet of the two snipers as well. Unfortunate. Comes in from the side. Beaming down this machine gun. This vet 3 LMG Grandy is taking no prisoners. Sets the T 34 down to assist. Rocket artillery. Maybe a little bit deep. Doesn't hit too much there. Bad start. Dodge on the rough nade. Oh, the double Jagdpans is coming down. Bit of blocking, though. One of them falls behind. We've got three AT guns here as well. But these guys are under too much pressure. I think there was an opportunity there for Dark Region to the kill if he popped tracking for the extra sight. I think he could have killed that Jagdpanzer there. Good, not good. They're trying to use some green deer med kits, I think. Interrupt it. Strips pressuring the AT gun, but then they get suppressed. Have to retreat. Nice machine gun angle there. are still behind on victory points. Allies do have a bit of breathing room to come back. Still looking for that opportunity to deploy the anti-tank overwatch. Kill off these tank traps. This group's actually doing surprisingly well in these fights. Though it doesn't really look like they have cover. Be a few models and cover those. Quite a lot of light cover traces around here. Kachusha action. It's again, it's a big whiff. Bad start to the Kachusha comeback. And a rebuild on the sniper for Chukcha. Interesting. Oh no. Well, Dark Region loses is this. I think he's going to recruit there, though. Get incendiary grenaded, however. T-34 getting a roll on, going hunting for the snipers, I think. Decides to back away, though. Oh, and the double Jagdpanzer is coming in for him. There's one shot. Jagdpanzer is not going to chase any further. Going to be able to limp home with that. 
I honestly think if he just charged in with the T-34, might have been able to get the snipers, but... Plays it safe. Now a triple cap against the allies. Really, that, uh... A Kachusha, I think, doing nothing in its first two barrages is what's holding the allies back. They've both got their anti-tank overwatches ready to go though, they just need an opportunity and it can be hard to find it sometimes when you're so far behind on territory control. Might be an opportunity to go to the north as well, there's not much up there right now. Get away from those snipers. I'm going to sneak into some camouflage there. T-34 is gone around the long way. It's a Shumine and a Raketan up here. Good little ambush there by the Falsham Jaeger. Oh, where's he going with that conscript? I think he's too busy trying to micro the T-34. Nearly loses it. But it does force away the stolen Dishka. Could open up the capture in the north now. Double Yagpans is rotating up there. Opens up an opportunity for Kirov through the middle. But the long range firepower from the Axis infantry is just too much. The Yagpans is switching back into the middle now. Here of, uh, I mean, uh, Dark Region got cold feet backed away here completely. Didn't open up the capture in the end. Here of, though, he's making some moves in the south, maybe. Sniper's now coming into the center. Looks like both snipers targeting the same model. Oh, and the vet sniper goes down. T-34 is making a move, but there's a good pack position. Oh, there's Della down there. He's hiding out the P4s. Smells blood in the water. So slow coming down though, if he just blitzed down here, he could have got this easy. He's gonna escape. Oh, P4's going in though. Both are quite low. Trip just dropping the artillery on the team weapons. Railway's coming down. Decrease the Zis. With the machine gun. Annihilates the Maxim with the railway artillery. Going for the kill on the Zis next. T34 wrapping around for Dark Region. There are a lot of telemines down here. This could backfire on them horribly. Decrease the pack, goes in for the ram. Penetrates as well, but where's the anti tank overwatch? Follow this up. I'm gonna go for it, just relying on the Zis and they both bounce, that's really bad luck for the allies. And he smokes at the last second! No attack round, there it is and it misses. Oh my, he's having to chase all the way in. The walking Stuka action down the bottom here, largely missing. Oh, the allies tried to greet their artillery, I don't know why Dark Region, he's got 500 munitions almost. He's going to Ura in, maybe he's going to drop it now. Use the conscripts to provide sight. They're coming in for AT grenade. It's not enough damage though. What is he doing? Why didn't he pop it? So greedy. He's got, f you know, he nearly had 500 munitions at the start of that. Such a bad play. That was a great smoke from Chukchu, like right on the edge of range when there's this was about to fire. So Dark Region didn't really have time to react and attack rounds and now he's going in with 
another tank, but it's the teller there. It's not going to work. Yeah, perfect spot. It's pretty much exactly what you want to do if you can. Gives your opponent no time to react. Can't believe he's so greedy when he's got so much munitions, you know? Now the allies are way down on victory points. T-34 is making a move here. Double snipers in a compromised position, but Jagdpanz is there. He's still on prioritized vehicles. He's hunting down this P-4. Oh, it's abandoned too. That's really just going to rub salt in the wounds. Here comes another T-34 for Kirov. He's dropped the anti-tank overwatch this time around. He's going in. Bounces his shot. Lost vision on this now. They're dropping down double anti tank overwatch, but they've got nothing to provide vision. I don't know why they're doing this. Conscripts uraring to close the gap. The enemy has only 50 points remaining. Some camping in the middle, meanwhile. Double Yagpans as they've cleared the arc. Missing a lot of shots though. <clears throat> Here comes the walking Stuka. Oh, got caught right on the end. There's really no excuse. You can see what's coming. For Urad to dodge that easily. This goes down up here as well. Down here. Tries to steal it, Chuk Chuk. Not enough for the engine crit. P4 is coming back in. The survivor. Bounces his first shot. He's chasing. Kirov doesn't have any anti tank guns anymore. Coming in from the south. Oh, this could be big. Double AT guns right here. That's a really. Oh, what a good Kachusha barrage. Bit of rubber band action from the T 34. Oh, she may go down as well as the P 4. What a move there from the Allies. The Axis dropping in the airborne assault, trying to back the allies off, and it'll work, but because those planes come in so slow, and in fact, sounds like they're getting shot down by the quad anyway. It is allowing him to uh, carry drop in some troops. Oh! Oh, that was a plane. Got to a kill out the back. Chasing down this Zist though with the infantry pressure. Double Jagdpans is backing this up. Dark Region does have an anti tank overwatch ready to go, and he's got just about got enough munitions for another one after that as well. He's just gonna let the Zist go down like this. So he might have just called it in to prevent the Zist from getting killed off there. Got some breathing room against these double Jagdpanzers. That vetting up very nicely. Looks like Chukcha really liking the double snipers. Continuously rebuilding them. A quick look at the KD now. Oh, that's not good for Kirov. After such a promising start where the allies were almost going even on kills for the first like 10 ish minutes, which is almost unheard of playing with conscripts. Downhill fast in the end game. Stuka decreased the Zisk. Kachusha back the other direction. Oh, gets the green here wipe there. So clumped up on cover. Now as a desperate on the victory points. Triple gap running eight remaining. I don't think they can do this. And there we go. 
yeah, it was a strong start in terms of like just straight up infantry trading early on for the Allies. And then, you know, the quad, even though it was quite late, was very strong for them with the Axis trying to like rush into their medium tanks, really slowed the Axis down a lot. But, uh, I th you know, the Axis fought back well, taking some good trades, Kirov maybe a little bit throwing with a few units. But, you know, the Allies were still in it, but then when this move with the P4 down the bottom here, Dark Region not dropping the anti-tank overwatch to polish off that P4, and then they just lost so much trying to chase in and kill it. Throwing good units after bad there. Uh, yeah, I just really can't understand why he would float so much munitions and just not pop it to seal the deal, make it all safe. Reckless stuff there. And uh, yeah, probably cost them the game in the end. Once they threw away like, what was it, two or three tanks going in for the kill? Yeah, there's not really uh, much opportunity to come back from that. But yes, really good double sniper play from Chukcha. Interesting to see. Spamming out those Panzer 4 Js. It's not a bad idea to go for the P4Js because, you know, if you are going to lose a tank to getting rammed an anti-tank overwatch, at least it's not as expensive as like a King Tiger or a Panther or something like that. A bit more, uh, a bit lower of a loss, but really the anti-tank overwatch didn't show its strength in this game. Some bad activations of it, or no activations. On, on top of that, it feels like maybe the Allies weren't really trying to bank up the munitions right from early on in the game, so they were late activating it. But yeah, the double Falsham Jäger working well for imbalance as well. And the double Jagdpanzer is, yeah, just to <laughs> add free reign. To, you know, they could maybe have got flanked. There weren't many mines down that I saw from unbalanced. So, you know, a bit of T-34 flankage along with anti-tank overwatch. It could have been devastating against them, but never really got going here, the allies. Anyway, guys, wrap on that. If you like what game to be cast by me, details are in the video description below. Otherwise, I'll catch you off the next thrilling installment. Goodbye and good luck.